answers. What is algebra? What makes algebra different from other maths? Josie? You use equations to solve the problems, and it does more useful things in real life I've found, but I use it more. Okay, equations is more useful. Alex? It has letters. Letters. <laughs> Okay, solve for an unknown number. All right, put unknown there. That's good. Anything else? Well, really, at its very core, its very essence, this is what makes algebra algebra. Okay, a lot of math is about unknowns. What is five plus three? I don't know. Oh, it's eight. Now I know. Right? It's kind of an unknown for like a split second, and then calculate it and you know, okay? Sometimes the, the thing that you don't know is not so simple, okay? In elementary school, and, and probably some of middle school, you saw equals as do this, you know what I mean? Yeah. Equals was more like, what's the result of doing this? Right. Now, it's true, I mean five plus three does equal eight, but I see people all the time treat equal signs like, okay, next step, next step, next step, next step. And they do not treat an equal sign like an equal sign. What does an equal sign mean? That the two numbers or equations are equivalent. Exactly the same thing, right? So uh, check this out. Let's say we got a trapezoid. We all know about trapezoids now. Uh, so this is eight, and this is five, and it's three, and it's height. Okay, let's find the area of this trapezoid. Help me out. Another one, or just draw another one of those on the Okay, we copy it over, I love it. We have eight there, five, and of course it's three tall. Put that little guy over there, right? Mm -hmm. All right. So now what? Jacob? Yeah, eight plus five. Eight plus five? Thirteen. Okay, so here's wrongness about to happen. All right. Eight plus five, thirteen. Now what? Three? Times three. Times three. Hold on. What's 8 plus 5? 13. What's 13 times 3? Uh, 39. Is 8 plus 5 39? No. no. But people do this all the time. All the time. They treat equal signs like, I'm just showing you the next step, and I'm going to do another step, and then I'm going to do this. Equals what? What's 13 times 3 again? 39. 39. But then what do we do? Divide by 2. Divide by 2. Equal. Do you see? How wrong this is? It's kind of sad. Well, it's not sad, but it is uh, kind of sad. <laughs> I guess it is a little sad. It's sad for the equal sign, because nobody understands the equal sign when they're doing this. Okay? Now, I know it, that you're, I mean, you know what equals mean. You can see what the equal sign means, because you don't use it appropriately sometimes, some of you. Or some of you all the time don't use the equal sign appropriately. Okay? Now, e the, the algebra really hinges on you Understanding what the equal sign means like, thoroughly and never misusing it, okay? And always, always treating both sides like they're exactly the same thing, all right? So it's, it's less of do this thing and get this answer, and it's more both sides of this are exactly the same as each other, okay? All right, so there's a, a little algebra basic, all right? Uh, in one minute, we can do this, this next part, okay? in your head, but you might lose track, so I'd recommend you write it down in your notes. Write it in your notes. All right, think of a number, absolutely any number, okay? Or let's, let's keep it a positive number, okay? Some tricks work okay with that, some don't. Okay, you ready? Track one.
Ini step and then I'm going to have you just double check all your stuff that you've done so far. Subtract the original number. First number you thought of, take that back. Take a second to double check all your work. Nothing sadder than when you uh, do something wrong and the payoff isn't there. Everybody ready? No? This one, with this kind of trick, if you, even if you pick a negative number, it should be fine. Decimal, fraction, anything. I mean, millions. Still gonna work. Why does it work? Good question. Yeah. You know what we can use to answer that question? Yeah. Math. You know what kind of math? Algebra. Algebra. Algebra will solve this. It will tell us why it works. Okay? Why algebra? What? Why algebra? Because algebra, uh, before algebra, um, if there was some number that you didn't know, okay, uh, or a number that varied, it was it was trickier, uh, quite a bit trickier. Before somebody thought of using letters to represent those numbers, it was trickier to figure out what that number was. Okay, There's this big thick book. I'll grab it for you. It's called The Elements. It's a uh, Considered to be the first geometry book. Okay, this is pre-algebra, meaning not the class before algebra, but before algebra was. Okay, so this is the first book on geometry, the first geometry textbook. Some of it, there's some commentaries in here and some other things, but it's largely just the printed writings of this guy named Euclid. Uh, who laid it all out there and said this is geometry. Um, the thing about this guy, he, he, he did some algebra, right? He did some finding some unknowns, but he did it by representing it as like a line and then like actually drawing things to figure out what that line must be worth. And that was a big pain. Then the idea of like writing these things down as their numerals, setting up equations, using letters, it organizes all that information so much better, so much more cleanly, so that it can be manipulated just a whole lot more simply. Right? Just makes it easier for our brains. It's just a really great idea, a really great invention, okay? Kind of like the iPhone. It's a great invention, made a lot of things easier to do. We, we could have done a lot of those things with computers and whatnot before the iPhone was around. When the iPhone came, you know, came around, it made just a lot of things easier, faster, more simple. And that's what algebra is like. Okay. Um, should we try that again with different numbers? Or should we try another trick? Another trick. Okay, let's try another trick. Sure. Once we know this secret behind this kind of stuff, we can make our own. We can just sit down, make one up. To a friend. Okay. Oh. Well, I just. There are all the steps. I forgot to put a little reveal in there. So we're going to double the number that you pick. Add 10 divided by 2 and subtract 3.
should be Here's another one. A little bit like the, the calculations are a little bit bigger. You might want to have a calculator, but you could do it in your head if you really didn't want to. Okay. You just throw this one at you. So. number between 2 and 9. Multiply that number by 2. Okay, this next step, you're going to do one of two things depending on if you've had your birthday already. If you've had your birthday this year, you're going to add 17. If you haven't had your birthday this year, you're going to add 1764. Then you're going to subtract your birth year you should have is a three digit number. This digit here is your number that you started with and this is your age. Whoa, that's awesome. <laughs> that's cool. Okay. Now this trick, these tricks are, are fun, but for me, being somebody who loves algebra as well, part of the fun for me is figuring out, you know, how it exactly works. So what kind of thing do you suspect is happening here? Like, how am I getting you to take a number, manipulate it, bring it to a number that I want you to get? Magic. No, definitely not magic. None guessing. of that. Guessing. I'm guessing? Yes. No, I'm not Design. guessing. In their age. Age, it's the number you pick, and somehow it works. It's not magic. It's not magic. You can use algebra to show that. It's just arithmetic. Just making you do some basic things. But how is it that I'm. Let's take a. This is a more complicated one. Let's talk about when I made you get five. How, just generally, you don't have to get specific if you don't know specifically, but how. It's the basic idea behind how I take a number make you do things to it, and then get you to arrive at five. Any suspicions at all? You have the, the steps written down. If you don't, I'll just bring them back. Okay. 
look at the steps and see if you can come up with any idea at all as to how it is I'm getting you to take your number and turn it into eight or turn it into five. Turn it into eight. Well, you always start by doubling it, which makes it an even number. Okay, so that's a, that could be a thing. I'm making you <coughs> make it a certain number. Okay. I double. I make you double it. What do I make you do later? It's related to double. Like? What do you know about multiplying by two and dividing by two? They're they're opposite of each other. Okay. The word we'll use and algebra class is inverse, they're inverses of each other. Right? Inverse operations, they do the opposite things of each other, the inverse thing of each other. Okay? You think that has something to do with it? First I make you double it, and later I make you divide it by two. What do you think? wind up with? Um, well, I mean, what, at the end, at the very end, what's the number that I have to wind up with? Five. Not this five. one. Five. five. What do you know about ten and five? If you divide ten divided by two, two is five. Ten divided by two is five. Did you divide by two? Yes. So what I'm kind of having you do is make a number and then undo all the stuff that I just had you do to that number. Not a big mystery there. But algebra algebra can show us exactly what's going on here. Okay? So how are we going to represent what's going on here with algebra? How do we represent this trick with algebra? Here I'm confused. Is there any suggestion? I'm being confused about a suggestion. What's a suggestion for something that we could do to represent this with algebra? It's kind of like an equation almost. Kind of. Like yeah. You do certain steps to get the answer. Yeah, there are steps. We do. We take a number. Do I know what that number is that you pick? Not really. Is it a constant? Is it the same? For everybody? If it's not constant, then what is it? What would be the opposite of constant? Variables. What are, how do we represent variables in algebra? Letters. letters, right? So letters, let's use a letter. Okay. What will this letter represent? The number that you pick. Whatever number you pick, I don't know what it is, right? But I can manipulate it have whatever I want come out. Okay? I can have you wind up with the same number you started with. I can have you wind up with a specific number that I want you to wind up with just by messing around with it. Okay? So let's start with a, a letter. What letter should we use? A. There's a tie for A and B. I'll use A because B kind of looks like a 6. We'll use A. Okay. We're going to use algebra to write this out. So what happens to A to start off with? It's doubled. Double, which means you, like what mathematically does that mean to be good? Times two. Multiply by two. How do I show A is being multiplied by two in algebra? A dot and then a two. A dot and then a two. That definitely would mean yeah. multiply A by two. Is there a shorter way, shorthand way, Sean? Parentheses. The two in parentheses next to Could you do that? That also means multiply A by two? Just put the two next to the A. Okay, so we know that, right? Two A. Mm -hmm. Two A means two times A. They all mean the same thing. What's the only difference about this? And it's shorter. Just shorter. No dots, no parentheses. You just put the two in front of the A, shorthand for two times A. Okay. What happens next? How do I represent that? A 
10 next. Divide by 2. Divide by 2. I don't know what you Like this. Divide by 2. Uh, and let's, what's, what's next? Subtract A. Subtract A. I want you to try, I mean, this looks pretty good. I want you to try your number again. The same number that you tried before. You know what you should wind up with, five. Okay. But what I want you to do is pay close attention to the expression we've written here, okay? It's called an expression. If it's not, if it doesn't have an equals sign, it's an expression. If it has an equal sign, it's an equation. Okay? Expression's an equation. This is an expression. I want you to strictly follow the order of operations that we agreed to use, right? Remember how we agreed to do that? It's not the right way, it's just the popular way, right? But I want you to, to plug your number in here for A and then very strictly follow the order of operations and see if you come out with what you're supposed to come out with, okay? Don't do it in the, don't follow these steps. That's not what I'm asking you. I'm asking you to use this expression strictly by the order that we talked about, the order of operation. Parentheses, exponents, multiplication, division, right addition, from left to right. All right. Did I tell you all how wonderful you are and how well you did on your tests? Yeah. That's good. You did. Okay. Did, we, did you follow it very strictly? And if so, what did you get? Nine, nine, ten. ten. You're all getting different things, which is to be expected, because there's something up with the way we've written this. It has to do with the order of operations. Can anybody throw it out there? What is it we need to change or fix? Sean? Well, I was going to say that we do this every step. We don't actually follow PEMDAS. When we're doing this? Yeah, we don't follow it. If we, but when we write it out, we tend to follow it. Well, we definitely should, because we should all get a yeah. same you know, result. Yeah. Okay. And so when you put, what did you put into A? Uh, I put four. When you put four in, yeah. then you know, Brady should get the same thing when he puts four in, because he follows the order of operations that we agreed yeah. to follow. Uh, but you all got different things, because you all put different numbers in for A. Right? Um, so, Sean, explain that more. What do you mean that when we do this, we don't follow the order of operation? Because when we do this, we usually don't like add before we divide. Okay, so we added 10. You see what Sean's saying? Yeah. If we just look at all the steps, just written out there, and we don't do them just like this, then this, then this, then this, then this. If we just looked at it, we would add first. Or no, we would, we would not add before dividing. That's yeah. what I meant to say. We don't add before dividing. Okay? So do you see what Sean is saying over here? If I were to force you to do it in the, the steps that you see over here. 2 times your number plus 10. And then what do I divide by 2? Whatever you get from doing that. Whatever you get from doing those two steps. Right? Can I make you do that in this expression? How can I make you take the result of 2a plus 10 and divide the whole thing by 2? You could use parentheses around the 2a plus 10. There we go. Now I have parentheses, and I make you do the addition first before the dividing by 2. You see? Before, the way it was written, I just divided the 10 by the 2. Try it again. Put your number in there. You should come out with five. And I'll just tell you right now, just so that you'll know, you will end up with five if you follow this order the way we had it written. Out there? Yeah. Yes. All right, 
So this bulleted list of steps that we take, we've recreated it in, an, what is this thing over here? Expression. What kind of expression? An algebraic expression. Algebraic expression, exactly. So this is an algebraic expression. Okay, and here's the key to tricks like this. They make you do all these steps. Mm. They make you do it in a kind of a complicated way, where if you wanted to do all this stuff, okay, to the letter, to the to the number that's being plugged in for a, if you wanted to do all that stuff, you could do it in much fewer steps. This could be cleaned up, right? By like picking something up and putting it down, moving it to the right and moving it to the left, and just leave it where it was. You know what I mean? Instead of having you do all this stuff, there's only a couple of things that you would really have to do to arrive at the same result. Do we know about the distributive property? Yes, but I don't remember that. Anyway. Okay. Let's do a couple of things. We'll talk about the distributive property mm, briefly. And we'll talk about more in depth in, uh, in a couple of days, maybe tomorrow. Okay. First, instead of divide by two, can I do multiply by one half? Yeah. The distributive property has to do with multiplying parentheses multiplying parentheses by other things. Multiplying, not dividing. Now dividing is, I mean, also apply. It's the distributive property also apply, but it's just easier to work with when we treat it like multiplication. So I'm going to multiply this by what? Mm -hmm. One half instead of divide by two. It's the same thing. Okay. So the distributive property says that if I have a sum or a difference of adding and subtracting inside of parentheses, okay, then if I multiply that parentheses by a thing like we have here, I made you do some stuff, add some stuff, then multiply by a half. Then everything in here needs to get multiplied by a half. Right? A half times 2a and a half times 10. So the result of taking that and dividing it by 2 is, well, what's a half times 2a? 2a times 1 half. 2a divided by 2. 1a. 1a. Yeah, very good. 1a. It's just one half times two times a. One half times two is one one a. Very good. Uh, what is one half times ten? Five. Five. So if I had you double your number, add ten, and then just cut that all in half, what could I have had you do instead? Multiply by half. Or divide by two. Okay. Let me let me try and uh, say it this way. Have you take the number, double it, add ten. Right? That's all of add this. Five. Just add five. Right? All of this stuff is the same as just taking your number and adding five. Instead of doubling your number, adding double of five and then cutting it all in half. Right? Now you have half of your number and half of ten, which is five. They could have just had you add five. And then what do we do after that? A plus five. Subtract A. Subtract A. Now what if I stood up here and I said, uh, pick a number, add five. Subtract your number, you have five. <laughs> wow. Is that very amazing? No, no. I hope not. I hope it's not amazing that I have you add a number, add, to add five, then take your number away. What's that? Five, of course. I just had you add five. But by disguising it with the distributive property, I was able to mystify you a little bit. Yeah? You could pick like a number between two and nine for this one? Not this one. That was only the other one. That one's kind of a doozy. So, if you, if you, how do you end up with five if you have a hundred and add five and then just minus five? Oh, because it's your original number. Yeah, okay. original number. Original number. Okay. Do you see what's going on? I'm, just having you, I'm disguising a simple, simple thing with all this other stuff. Let's look at this other one. This first one we did, where we wound up with an eight. I want you to do your best to write this as an algebraic expression. Just write it as an algebraic expression. And remember, if you need to use parentheses to, to like force people to do things out of the order of operations, then you need to use those parentheses. All right, we're going to work through this one kind of quickly together. 
Okay, and then uh, I'm going to give you one that you're going to take home and try and decipher and figure out what you're going to get. You need an algebra to do that. Okay, so we're going to think of any number. How do we represent any number? With a variable. I'm going to go classic x. Okay, x is a classic variable to use. Uh, I got a lot of room right here, so I'll write that out. We got x. So far, so good. Subtract one from it. Okay, minus one. Multiply by 3, but if I say multiply by 3, that's just 1 times 3. Parentheses around the whole thing, x minus 1. Here we go. Okay, add 12. Order of operations will make me multiply this 3 by the thing before I add 12 to 3. So I wouldn't add 12 to 3. Order of operations is making me do it right. Okay? Then I want to divide by 3. Jacob's got something. Add parentheses behind the Here? Ready? Yeah, another one on the left. Another one here. Right? Every, what you call this is a closed parentheses. Parentheses. Right? Every closed parentheses needs an open one. You open the parentheses, you close the parentheses. Good? Uh, add five. Right? Good. Order of operations is going to do the same thing as, as all this stuff. Subtract the original number. How am I going to show that? Minus, minus, x. minus x. Okay. Let's uh, simplify this down and reveal the magic here. Okay. So x minus one. So 3. We're going to distribute that 3 there. Right? We'll get 3x minus 3. Okay. So the same thing would have been if I just had you triple your number and subtract 3. Then we're going to add 12. That's inside this parentheses here. Okay, then we're going to divide by 3. Then we're going to add 5. Then we're going to subtract x. Okay, well, 12 minus 3, right? Negative 3 plus 12. That's just what? 9. 9. So instead of doing all this business, I could have just had you triple your number and add 9. That would have been the same thing. It would be the same place right now. Okay. Well, then I have you divide by 3. I made sure that you had a number that was divisible by 3 and a number that was divisible by 3 by having you do all of that stuff. Right? I, in essence, had you triple your number, and I gave you, I wound up having a number that was divisible by 3. So when we divide both of them by 3, by the distributive property like we talked about, we'll talk about that more in depth later, you should get 1x plus 3 plus 5 minus your number. And what's 5 plus 3? 8. So again, take your number and add 8. It would be the same thing as doing all this. It would be the same as just adding 8 to your number. All of this stuff really just takes your number and tags 8 onto it. When we subtract x from that, our number, we are left with 8. Okay? Instead of doing all that business, right? steps 1 through 6, I could have just told you take a number and add 8. It would have been equivalent. All right, I'm going to give you one. You're going to write it down, and you are going to take it home. Write now the break expression, simplify it, show us what's going on. So take a number, take a number, add 5, okay. double it, the result of that, add 6, divide by 2, subtract 8, And then I'm sure you can quickly figure out what happens. Do we wind up with a specific number? Do we wind up with a number we started with? What is it that we wind up with? You're going to be able to tell me that easily. Simplify it. Reveal 